Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So people ask me about this animation and that's why I'm going to make a tutorial. However, this isn't anything hard actually, um, especially I have discussed the similar concepts for many, many times. The only part I think is really important is, a, uh, is its shader motion graphics, which I have discussed in a separate tutorial. So you can go to the link on the right upper corner or the one in the description, because this is the part I won't really cover in details in this tutorial. So let's start. So let's firstly do the modeling. Uh, the modeling will be rather very simple. Uh, I'm going to use the effect only the origin. And I'm going to just uh, try to snap to one faces of the cube. And then I'm going to shift S selection to cursor. So now if I'm trying to scale down these cubes, you can see it only affects from the origin and it will scale up to only one side. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, now I'm going to add a subdivision surfaces. I'm going to change the type to simple and add several times. Uh, it will actually hit a lot of polygons, but um, the, the reason I only care is actually the vertical cut. So you can do this non-procedurally just uh, by using the loop cut. It actually does not really matter. Uh, the only point is because I'm going to use the um, simple deform. And the way simple deform works is very, very weird. Um, I, I never actually really understand how it works, but uh, it will only work in a very good way if it's um, facing up. And then I'm going to control A to apply the rotation. And by doing that, if I'm changing the axis to Y and changing the angle, then it will form a circles. I don't know why this is the case, uh, but uh, if you do it incorrectly, then it won't work. And now we don't have actually a circle, it's because I scale that the transform. So in this case, you apply the, trans uh, the scale as well, then it will solve the problem. This is something that you need to be aware of, because if you're using animation nodes to change the scale, sometimes it will cause a problem. But now what happens is you can form a right circles, a correct circles using this method. And then if you try to just rotate on X, actually Y, negative 90, then it will still form a circle. And that's how you actually line down a plane or something like that. Just be careful with these subdivision surfaces. So give a vertex color uh, for our shader motion graphics. And in our shaders, I have a helper. And if you know, if you have um, know much about shader motion graphics, many times in my other tutorials, like the forest, the growth, or something like that, I usually do everything within the principal BSDF. Um, and certainly you can do this as well. But this time I'm going to use the mix shader. So instead of using the mix RGB, that usually I mix the color. This time I'm going to use plug the color into factor of mix shader to switch between two completely different shaders. So this is also a way that you can work with that. And let's change the type to emission. And we will see the effect later once we go to nodes. So in the animation node, I'm going to instance these objects. So let's Hit a distributed matrices, object instance, object matrix output. Basically, three nodes that I always use for instance objects. So let's object into objects, matrices into matrices. Copy the full objects and deep copy. Basically, I always hit these two buttons so that uh, their children will inherit all the vertex colors and the modifier if necessary. And this is basically it. And now they stand up because the transformation has been reset using these matrices. What we're going to do is to do the same thing but with nodes to offset these matrices and rotate for 90 degrees on Y. You can also on the positive 90, it does not really matter. I'm going to change the type into step so that if I increase the... So let's hide the original cube. So if I increase the count, it will just increase 
without the affecting the interval of between the objects. Okay, so this is basically done. Next thing is basically just to get a control. So let's use a object controller for hit this control. Uh, I'm not going to plug the control to here because this is not what we want. What we actually want to actually is to use this control. Uh, one part is to change the vertex color of our children. Another part is actually to change the um, simple transform of the children. So let's take a cop uh, objects attributes output. This node allows us to go to the objects attributes, including this angle. So let's right click and copy data path. And then we need to set, um, input any values like the float or whatever. So here is actually a, you can put a float, actually it does not really matter. So let's hit this, uh, let's get a map range. We're going to evaluate both based on the location of each of each children. Let's change the type into matrices matrix. So let's input the fourth and the matrices into matrices. And the strength is a value that goes between goes from zero to one. So if the the origin of the objects is completely within our fourth, which means our uh, controller at this moment, then it means it's 100% within the fourth, then the strength is one. For the other children that is not in our fourth at all, then their strength is zero because there is no part, no any part within this fourth. So here we're going to, I think I'm going to use a two pi. Let's see how it actually works. So if I plug that to the value empty, you can see it uh, readily works. And here is, um, there is some part which has, uh, this is also something interesting probably, but uh, whatever. You can also manage that to negative pi. Huh? Or you can even change the direction, who cares, that's not really matter. Or you can, and you can increase the, the step, so that's forming a different pattern. Something like that, that's not really matter. Let's change the type to directional. And you need to define the direction. Like uh, we are moving our x axis, so this is the way it works. So now we have everything being done. So basically this is it. Uh, in terms of a shader motion graphics, you just use the object shader loop that I created in my shader motion graphics tutorial. Um, because these objects cannot go into an object socket, so what you need is just uh, hit W and it goes to the right to loop through objects and plug the object into the object. I've made a tutorial talking about the loop if you're not sure what does loop means and there's iterator and parameter, but basically this is how it will, will work at this moment. And by using this, let's go to the shaders. Does it actually work in the way we want? And we need to plug the fourth, of course. So set the parameter and put the fourth into fourth. And uh, this is shader motion graphics. But just be aware that the, the emission shader in EV is fake. So it's actually not emitting light. It only shows some reflection. So this is something that you need to concern if you're really working at very serious motion graphics and stuff, that you probably need the actual light. Uh, fortunately speaking, that um, the object instancer is also possible for uh, instancing light as well. Yeah, it can actually instance point light. So this is maybe something that you can also do as the time goes, but I'm not going not going to details for each of them. And the, I think uh, the original animation is just a loop from nothing and uh, 
the end as nothing. So this is not very hard to understand about how to loop that, I suppose. So you just move your cameras after everything has been finished. So you, it's possible that you parent your cameras. So let's get our cameras. And maybe the camera is uh, parented to our controllers. So as the controller moves, then you have nothing. And now you start with nothing and this forms a loop. The loop of the floor is, um, is just a dead. Just to change the Z without affecting the controller. So something like that. So you, by just moving these controllers, you get everything done. So now you can loop. The looping of the floor is very straightforward. You either generate a seamless texture on the floor, on two sides of the floor, like a duplicate one or duplicate the others, or you just, um, oh, who knows how you will actually do that. But I don't think this is some part that I need to go into details for that. And uh, honestly speaking, for that particular animation, this is really all about it. Actually, this is not complicated at all. The only complicated part is probably these shader motion graphics. And this was originally basically a test that I didn't expect it to be very complicated, whatever stuff. But uh, from a designing purposes, it's, uh, from a designing point of view, this is really, really poor to made. So here's... Um, is, so the question is, is that possible to make it more complicated? You just, uh, it's possible that you just increase the Y division. But if you increase the Y division, you can also see because um, it's, uh, it's a grid. So it's very uniform. There is no offsets of this entire grid. So on the other side, it looks kind of very boring. So the question is that, is that possible to make it more interesting? Then here will comes to be another concept that has been discussed in the past about the replicate metrics. So what we're going to do here is instead of put X division and Y division in the same distributed matrices, I'm going to put them into a separate distributed matrices. So put the original X matrices into the matrices and the Y matrices will be a transformation. And I'm going to use the new lens to instance the object and put the matrices into matrices. So now we still get the same results and you might question, okay, why am I doing these things using more nodes instead of using small amount of nodes. And here we're going to um, affect the Y matrices only without affecting the X axis uh, matrices. What I'm going to do here is just to use the offset matrices and you can instantaneously see the actually effect. Actually not. Let's take a index mask of all. And now you see the effect that every second of Y matrices has been rotated 90 degrees. So that's when it has been used as a transformation to affect our X division. Some of them has been flipped while some of, of others not has not been flipped. This is kind of idea that you can work, but today we're not going to work with rotation, but I just want to offset on the scale. So now I think this is something that you can make it more interesting and just to go with the fourth. It affects, it still affects in the same ways. And I think that by doing so, it makes it more interesting. So this is kind of a way to really improve these entire things um, once you get everything done very correctly. But uh, this is kind of idea. Also, one thing to mention is um, this setup is not necessarily good because it only changed the shaders. Actually, the shader is very bad. Uh, what you can also do is actually to use the add shader instead of mix shader. So the issue of add shader, so what it happens if you're using add shader is that you keep the both shader at the same time. I don't know actually how it does, how it does means, but you can try to deal with this by yourself. Uh, the, the 
issue, however, is that you don't have a choices to actually use the factor to control this addition. But what you can actually do is to use the mix shader and then plug that into factor. So now if the fault goes to so this is how it will actually works. And then once the emission is blocked, it means it does not emit anything. Then it actually means the our principal BSDF is actually working. And the reason you add a add shader is sometimes maybe you have additional features within the principal BSDF, like metallic or other things, who knows? Reflection, so you keep all these properties along with the emission. So these are all some things that you can potentially think about while you're working with the entire setup. So you can see there is a reflection that has still has been going. But if you try to ch change that everything is into the mixer shader, then you basically only have emis uh, emission left without any reflection. So these are kind of tiny details that to really consider while you're working with the emission shader. So something like that. Um, and I think this is it. So I hope this is not very complicated anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.